Hey, what's up everybody? This is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner and today we are going to be looking at Genelex 8331A coincident coaxial speaker, part of their SAM line. It's the smallest one in their The Ones and man, it's, it's a awesome, awesome little speaker. So let's get into it. I really and truly did have, didn't have anything to say negative about the speaker. And it's really hard as a reviewer, when you review a speaker that sounds good, it's really hard to say what you like about the speaker other than you liked it. Now, I imagine most of you are like me too, that when you've heard a stereo system or you've heard a speaker that just doesn't sound good, man, you can write a novel on all the things you don't like about it from the bass being muddy or the vocals being congested, congested? congested, the hi-hats being too bright, voices being too sibilant, nasally, just all these different adjectives that you use to describe the sound. And it's so easy to do it. But when you have a speaker that's really good, you're struggling for words. Like I'm struggling for words right now. I want to give you content. I want to give you affirmation and reasons why I think the speaker is good. But this is a case where I don't have a lot of words of affirmation to say, oh, I love the speaker. It's flowery and it makes my coffee and it trims my toenails and all those things. Wait, trims my toe. Okay. Anyway, I don't have a lot of great words to say superfluous words because it's just a great speaker. Check it out. See what I mean when I say it's a, it's, it's small. I mean, it's it. It's about 15 pounds, give or take. I don't remember the exact weight, but it's somewhere in that ballpark. And you'll see on the front, there is a tweeter and a coaxial mid range together. And then on the bottom and the top, and it's gonna be hard to see, we'll have an exploded view here in a second. There are two mid bass drivers and then on the back is the port and the back has a lot of inputs and outputs as well. But yeah, really small speaker, perfect. Perfect for that studio space where you may not have a lot of room. Comes with their little ISO pods as well. So you could actually move this down, move it up and you can control the, the tilt angle if you want. So if you have them, set below you, you can tilt them up, or if you have them set above you, you can tilt them down. You can actually even lay them on their side. I've seen them put that way, but you know, when I tested them, I tested them sitting upright. I actually received these from a viewer, so shout out to that viewer for loaning these to me. And while I show you a couple more pictures of it, I'll mention some of the specs. This is a powered monitor speaker. Costs about $2,500 for each one, and I think that's MSRP, but you can find them on sale for about $22.50. And then here is a picture of the speaker on the front. You can see that right here is a little LED and that LED will light up when it's powered. Also, it gives you an amber or a red indicator if you're running the speaker into clipping or protection. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. On the right side, you can see a explosion graphic of the internals of the speakers. Now on the back, as I said, there are some inputs and outputs, but there's also a bank of dip switches that allow you to control the bass, the treble, and also you can even turn off the LED light if you want. For what it's worth, in my testing, I didn't touch any of these. I left them all in the off position. Genelec does provide you a graphic which shows you what each of the settings does to the frequency response. So you have that here. Now these are all on axis only and in my data, I'll go a little bit further, but I didn't test the different settings because I really need to get these back to the owner as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and start off with the data. Now, before we dive into this, I want to note that all of the data that you're about to see was collected using my Clipple near field scanner. It is a state of the art robotic measurement device that allows you to get anechoic data in a non anechoic environment. This is the first graphic. This is the CEA 2034 graphic. The on-axis response in black at the top looks pretty good. It's about plus or minus one and a half dB throughout the frequency range from about maybe I'd say 60 hertz or so all the way up into about maybe 16 kilohertz, give or take. So the extremes notwithstanding, the speaker is about plus or minus one and a half dB as general expects. The off-axis response is defined in the rest of these graphics, and I'm going to focus on namely right now the listening window. So the listening window is if you're sitting above or below about 10 degrees of the tweeter line or plus or minus 30 degrees off to the side of the tweeter line. And really what you want is you want that listening window to mimic the on axis response. When it doesn't, that's usually an indication that there is some kind of issue in the speaker itself. 
Very large differences are more problematic. Smaller differences are not such an issue, especially when you're talking about a coaxial or a concentric driver. Usually when you're sitting directly on axis, there is going to be some dips and some peaks in the on axis response just due to the symmetry of the mid range acting as a waveguide in relation to the treble response. So usually what you'll see is some kind of peaks and dips in the high frequency response. But two brands that really nail coaxial concentric designs, Kef and Genelec. And as you can see in this design by Genelec, there really doesn't seem to be any of that peaking and dipping going through here. And it's really mostly smooth. Now there is some overlap where the listening window kind of runs into it. I'm not necessarily sure what the cause of that is, but I think that it's so mild that it's not something that I would consider problematic holistically. Maybe in the horizontal data below, we'll understand a little bit more of what's going on here. But for now, I also want to talk about the early reflections directivity index. And this is just a ratio of the listening window versus the early reflection. So the sounds that hit the side wall and the front wall and come back to you at the listening position. Ideally, you want a smooth line through here. And when you have a line that indicates that the relationship between the listening window and the reflections is consistent, the steepness of that line or the shallowness of that line can vary. And that's where user preference kind of comes into play. Now we do see some kind of interference right through here in this 800 Hertz region. I'm not necessarily sure what that is. I don't know if that's some kind of breakup. I don't know if that's diffraction. I don't know if it's resonance. And I don't know if it could be some kind of lobing pattern uh, caused by the two mid bass drivers. I, I doubt it is just because it seems rather high in frequency for it to be that. But regardless of the fact that it exists, I don't know that I would consider it terribly problematic. The other thing going on up into here, we see some kind of deviations here, but they're so minor. They're about half a dB in level that I, I can't expect that anybody's going to hear these kind of deviations and complain. And then to continue on, we can see that it's relatively flat throughout, which means that you have a consistent radiation pattern in the treble region above about one and a half kilohertz, which is a good thing to have, in my opinion. Now, some speakers like this may tend to sound a little bit bright, but in this particular case of this particular speaker, I think that the fact that you had this little bit of a trough right through here in the high frequency area, combined with the constant directivity right through here, keeps it from having too bright of a sound. Now, if the black line, the on-axis response, were flat right through here, then my hunch is that this speaker might tend to sound bright, but I think the combination of having that little dip right through here and the constant directivity in the early reflections yields a more neutral in-room response, but that's going to be up to you to see what you think in your listening sessions. The data is just here to help guide us through what a purchase decision will get us. I also mark that the F3 is 49 hertz and the F10 is 39 hertz. Now this is anechoic. In room, in my listening room at three meters away with each speaker about three meters from every wall, I had flat response, well, flat-ish, as, as flat as a room's going to be without EQ, down to 40 hertz. So they had no problem getting into that kick drum area. I think if you put them even closer to a wall, then you're going to get a little bit more boundary reinforcement. And I would still advise you to play around with those dip switch settings on the back because you may actually have too much bass. It really just kind of depends on your room and your configuration. But keep this information in mind. Now, this is the estimated in-room response. And a minute ago, I was talking about a constant directivity in the treble tends to have a little bit of a bright sound to me. And what I would expect from most speakers is this would kind of flatten off right through here. But because the speaker has a dip in the on-axis response, it kind of lends itself to having a little bit more of a trough right through here. Uh, and it's very, very minor, but I think it keeps it from being a little bit too bright. Now, you may be wondering, what is this going to sound like? Well, that's around the four kilohertz region. So the four kilohertz region is going to sound a little bit, maybe subdued. It's about one to one and a half dB or so down in level. And then we've got a little area right around here, around one and a half kilohertz as well. EQ will fix these. Well, how do I know that EQ will fix these? Well, let's go back up. Wherever the directivity is smooth, we can equalize that. And the directivity here is relatively smooth through these areas. So now we've got just the horizontal response. And let's pay attention to this area because I've noted earlier that the listening window was bumping up above the on-axis response. 
And we see the reason for that is because the off-axis response out to about 30 degrees is coming down, but then it's coming back up relative to the on-axis response. So that just means that the off-axis sound through that area, through about seven kilohertz, six kilohertz or so, is going to be a little bit brighter. And I mean, just a little bit, maybe like one dB hotter in treble than the on-axis sound. But I still, looking at this data, I would still recommend putting these speakers and aiming them on axis. Normally I say with the coaxial or with a wave guided speaker or a tweeter, normally I say to tow them out, you know, anywhere from five to 15 degrees off axis. And it just kind of depends on the design. But with this particular speaker, I don't think towing them out is, is going to be the best way to go. Now just looking at this and based on my own listening, I found that on axis was the best sound. And this is the horizontal polar pattern. Very similar to what we saw in early reflections directivity. The speaker is about, what is this? Um, so plus, plus or minus 90 degrees out to about 800 Hertz. And then at about 800 Hertz, that's when it starts to narrow up. And we actually saw this same behavior right here. Okay. So 800 Hertz up until that point, the speaker is pretty much staying in line. Okay. So this is the vertical polar response and it's pretty much the same thing as the horizontal. It's just flipped up right, which just means that realistically you can be in a pretty wide range horizontally or vertically and have a really good sound stage and good tonality. But again, I think the best place to be is probably with your ears right at tweeter level. This is distortion at 86 dB one meter. And remember, this is just one speaker. Now, if we go to 96 dB, we can see that the distortion does increase. Then when we go to the compression and linearity test, that's when things go kind of funky. And I actually emailed Genelec about this result. What I found through listening and playing around with these speakers a little bit more is when you really start pushing them to a point where they're not supposed to play, the red clipping light lights up and it almost instantaneously mutes the music. So I think what I'm seeing here in this data is an indication of that. I think that when I was running the sign sweep through it, I think the speaker is muting that speaker immediately to protect itself. I contacted Genelec. They gave me kind of a blurb about it. It's actually in my written review, which you can go check out. I'll drop that in the link below. But basically, yes, this is what they expected to see, and it's not a concern to them. And I will say that in my listening room at three meters away for the stereo pair, I pushed these speakers to about 103 dB before that indicator went solid red. And it was just, it was almost like trying to break the speaker realistically. So I think that 100 dB, 102 dB, somewhere around that for a stereo pair in a room is probably going to be doable. But I don't really recommend anybody listen to music that loud. And if you were using these as a near fill monitor, you're going to be even closer than I was in my listening sessions. And I, I did do some near fill listening, but that was mainly just to do some sanity checks, right? Um, if you're listening in the near field, then these aren't going to be an issue, but it's good to have this data for comparison purposes. If you're looking for a speaker that will get loud, I would say that if you're trying to get really loud and, or you're sitting really far away from the speaker, then you're probably going to go ahead and step up to the next series in this lineup, which I don't know, is it the 8341? I don't know. I don't really know this lineup too well, to be honest with you. So that's, that's really it for the data. Subjectively speaking, it's a fantastic speaker. I mean, really, when you're talking about Genelec and you're talking about their The Ones series, you don't expect anything other than superbness. Is that a word? Superbity? Superb? You know what I mean. You don't expect it to be not good, right? And this speaker is absolutely awesome. I personally love a good concentric design. And as I said earlier, Kef and Genelec just, man, they nail this stuff. They knock it out of the park. A good concentric design to me just does things in the sound stage that very, very few other speakers, typical speakers can do. And it's really, to me, it's like if you haven't had the opportunity to hear this speaker or other speakers like it when they're a well-designed concentric design, you need to make sure you take an opportunity, any chance you get, even if it's just, you know, biting the bullet and ordering it from somewhere with a good liberal return policy. Because when you hear that, it really kind of just, wow, it's one of those eye-opening moments. And so this Genelec doesn't disappoint at all in that regard. 
Um, soundstage, imaging, all that stuff is just superb. The tonality is excellent. It's flat out of the box. Really great directivity. The data shows us an objectively really solid performer. It's great for the size, good output, great near field to midfield, maybe not great far field. So that's going to be the one catch on this speaker. It's not cheap, but what you're paying for is a speaker that performs extremely well, has great linearity, and will do a great job for you if this is your profession. Now, if you're just somebody who likes playing around with speakers, play around with it, try it out. I'm sure you'll be on to the next thing. But if you're a mastering engineer or a mixing engineer, and you're looking for something that's kind of a step up from the budget speakers you've been playing around with, the ones are going to be it for you. I, I truly think that. So give them a shot. And with that said, I'm out. If you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the like button. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Peace.